<sighs> hey folks, it's Mike again um, for another vlog. I want to talk about something. Um, well, I've, I've been trying to kind of think about a way to kind of talk about this because of the fact that everyone's seen, everyone and their mum has seen this new Ghostbusters trailer released. It's a, a nice little trailer. It kind of brings back some memories. You can kind of hear some semblance and some character direction and references to its predecessors. Now, no issue with that whatsoever. Um, and I'm not going to go in too much into the, the whole Ghostbusters trailer thing because I'm going to just be repeating and regurgitating what everyone else has been saying. A lot of people have been angry about it. A lot of people have been angsty about it. And mostly the reason behind it isn't the fact that it's it looks bad. It's because you've got women playing the characters instead of the men. And I want to kind of go into this a little bit and, and discuss this. Not because of gender. Not because of character. But more because of casting against type in general. I have no issue when casting against type if it's done appropriately. Like if a character's been written that way or if being casted that way, for instance, um, check out Samuel Jackson and Nick Fury. Now, the way that Samuel Jackson was able to play the character wasn't because they just decided one day, hey, you know, we want a black Nick Fury. Let's get Samuel Jackson on the line and get him for the role. No. Um, Brian Michael Bendis basically created and crafted a different Nick Fury for the Ultimate Universe, which, because it became so popular, it spilled over to the main Marvel Universe. Plus, when they were basically creating these movies, they decided, hey, you know what, let's not do the old kind of 80s style Nick Fury that kind of it was more passe. Let's do the guy from the Ultimate Universe who's more updated he's a different kind of character his concepts are different let's do him instead and they decided to go that route um, and also there was legalities with samuel jackson signing he he basically found the image it looked like him and said hey wrote a nice little letter to marvel saying i'm willing to you know sign away my rights to this character and its likeness as long as you actually like you know cast me as nick fury which all sides basically wanted to do that so that that's a good way of doing it but in terms of every single movie i've seen or if it's a movie about a comic book or a book and they decide to cast against type there's a, it, it doesn't really work in certain ways now let me explain this for instance the new flash tv series the fact that they've cast Wally West as black, a lot of people got upset about that. But it was the only other way to do it because they cast Iris West and her father as black. And it worked. And it worked in, in a sense, well, not in case for Wally, he's kind of out there in a sense. But it, it worked because the story dictated it. You know, you had characters, you had backstories. It worked the same way as it would have done in the comic books because the characters were still there that were still relevant it still mattered it worked really well in terms of what they were trying to accomplish now let's fast forward to fox's fantastic four movie you you, you know that movie the, the one where they cast michael b jordan as the human torch and decided hey let's rewrite sue storm's backstory and this is why it didn't work the backstory was poorly written the characters were poorly written. It didn't matter. It really bastardized everything that the main comics did, even the ultimate comics when they updated it. And it didn't help things in terms of what they were doing, you know? Um, and, and this is the thing that, that I kind of get really pissed off about when you work on a character when you work on a story when you work on updating something you have to make sure that everything works within that universe because when those characters are created when the person originally makes something it has to it, it has to work if it doesn't work there's no symmetry if there's no backstory or characterization if it if there is some flaws in the ideas that you're trying to push forward 
you, you can end up killing everything, kiboshing everything within minutes. And it doesn't help in terms of what you're trying to accomplish as a writer, and it also doesn't help with the people that are depicting these characters have no fucking clue what they're doing, you know. Now, again, we're going to move forward to, you know, the whole idea of the um, Gotham series. This series bugs me <laughs> for more way than one, and it bugs me not just because of the fact that it's like, it's Gotham without Batman, but it's got Batman, he's there, look, ooh. Uh, you know, we're going to we're going to make sure that when the series ends, Batman's going to pull on the cowl and it's going to all make sense and blah, 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 blah. And it works for our universe. <clears throat> the big flaw with Gotham is the fact that the series itself is very incoherent and inconsistent. You have characters that people know and love and they decided, OK, let's play with these characters, but let's totally go nonsensical with them. Like, you know, with Jim Gordon's wife totally becoming a psychopath. Um, well, ex-wife now, shall I say, um, with his, you know, the the whole thing with Bruce Wayne trying to become Batman and then trying to find out who killed his parents and this big conspiracy and stuff like that. That didn't work. In It's supposed to, in, in, its, in its own self, be its own self-contained universe. But it doesn't really help matters when you go so far off the fucking boat that you literally have just you're swimming in water and the the big thing that they've done recently is they've done a character who's the joker and they've casted their joker as female this is why it doesn't work and you know i can and it's not because of the fact that she's a woman it's because of the fact that the joker as a character even if you look at the new 52 is a complete and utter psychopath now for those people who know the the main Batman story, the the kind of the pre fifty two Batman, the Joker was a character called Red Hood. Red Hood fell into a bat of acid, um, and he was basically one of Batman's one big failures in a sense. You know, of course, if you don't include the whole Jason Todd thing, which was his biggest failure, because Bill, uh, you know, Bruce had that whole guilt trip over that one. Um, so you have like that that whole story and that whole continuity and you have the fact that you've had several different actors playing this role um jack nicholson being the one that i i love the most basically from the original batman series done by tim burton um he basically played the character rather differently the the character replaced joe chill as being the killer of bruce's parents and then we saw eventually how batman you know changed him and mutated him into the Joker, having a similar incident of going through the the acid and excuse me, and, and with that situation, he transformed, became a nutcase, and started killing everybody. But he was kind of a still a very flamboyant Joker, a very aggressive Joker. But you wouldn't really want to piss him off, you know, and and counter any of his decisions. Then you go on to Heath Ledger's Joker, who was more of a psychopath. There was nothing stated about him. No one knew how he existed. No one knew how he came about. And he was kind of the the Joker to Christian Bale's Batman, with Bale being more of an aggressive, uh, more jump, you know, feet first kind of Batman. Uh, and yes, I know the fake voice kind of annoyed people because he sounded like he needed like a, a strep sill. You know? But despite that it worked within that universe because no one knew anything about the character and it was supposed to be done in that way to later bring an origin story out um, which Christopher Nolan wanted to kind of play around with that but once he passed away they felt it was an honor just to leave the character be which was a shame because I wanted to see what they could have done with him then we move over we roll over to the new kind of joke from Suicide Squad who a lot of people have basically talked about the fact that he's very much a different style of Joker. He's kind of a cyberpunkish, um, fanboyant. Uh, a lot of people call him hipster type Joker. I'm gonna leave that one be because I I don't like the character from what I've seen. But in the end, I don't know. You know, I haven't seen enough to kind of have an interpretation of him. Then we have um, 
you know, Mark Hamill's Joker, who's been clearly seen as one of the best. You know, simple. Um, so when you look at that and you think, okay, look what Hamill's done, the way that the voice works, how psychotic the character works. And he kind of modeled that character a little bit on, if you saw the predated Flash series, The Trickster. Um, oh, or, or if you've seen The Trickster in the new series as well, he's, he's in that. Uh, and again, it's kind of a psychopath, a, a bloodlust type character. He's a guy that he wants to make Batman laugh, but at the same level, he wants to bring chaos. He's the total opposite of who Batman is. He's the yin to his yang. Now, let's move on to this Joker. Now, for Gotham, she looks like a bondage grandma. Um, I believe the mannerisms she's trying to portray. It's the, the girl from Tank Girl. I've, I've forgotten what her name is. Uh, you have to excuse me on that because it's late at night here and my brain has gone all blah, 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 blah. Um, but she's the the way that the character is portrayed and as a lot of people said she looks like Ellen DeGeneres um, it it doesn't work and the reason why it doesn't work is because of the fact the Joker wasn't a serial killer the Joker did brought chaos but it was organized chaos in his own kind of you know, perception. Even if you look at the New 52 Joker, he was always behind the scenes um, when he was the, uh, the, I think it was called the Thin Man or the Skinny Man. Or and he was always like bringing about, he was looking for this kind of someone to challenge him in a sense. And he, he got this obsession with Batman. Um, and, it, and it worked. And that's the the thing with it, with this, it's sh the Joker was never brought about by Gordon. Uh, the Joker was never brought about in such a way that it it happens to be before Batman even existed, because it makes no sense. The events that happened to create the character never existed. Then um, I've I've heard some rumors that she her name is jerry she's the inspiration for the joker the joker doesn't take inspiration from anybody he, he doesn't he's a control freak he wants to make sure that if you've seen the the whole shit where he beats the fuck out of harley quinn he doesn't do it because he wants to beat the crap out of her and murder her he does it because he has that semblance of control over her it's an abusive relationship and that's the way he tackles everything. If someone pisses him off, I mean, doesn't even laugh at one of his jokes, he'll kill the guy because he has that sense of control. He's always been the guy who wants to make Batman laugh. He wants that, that big final joke. He wants to, you know, he, he, he'll bring Batman to the brink of death, but then he will do something like Death of the Family where he'll try and kill every member of Batman's entourage in order to turn Batman back to the way he was because he believes he was soft the whole f thing about casting against type if you're going to do it because it's cool that's where the problem lies you you don't have any identical characteristics to the character you're not drawing strengths from the character in the comic books you're not even interpreting a variation of the character you're just doing something because you think oh people will love this or the sjw's on the internet will love this that's where you've got the problem now as i said back to the whole ghostbusters franchise thing and, and the fact that it's been so disliked the reason being behind that is because people who are a fandom of the, the original ghostbusters including myself don't like the fact that this is being remade it's basically a casual reboot you know and and for those who don't know it's been rebooted twice if you remember ghostbusters 2 was actually a remake of ghostbusters 1 but more pg-esque <laughs> so for those who don't know that, because if you actually watch both of those movies back to back, it's literally just a, a studio version of what they did prior. Now, the the problem also is that there's none of the original cast members are really a part of this to hand things over to these girls. It's just, you know, it is what it is. Um, a lot of people, though, the, the majority, I will have to admit, who are infuriated, though, are infuriated because women are taking on the role of men and it's become that basically what Paul Feig has done is he's turned it into another bridesmaid movie like oh look 
the roles are reversed. You have a male secretary in Chris Hemsworth and you have these amazing women who are doing the jobs of what the other guys did. And for me, though, I don't see a problem with it. I don't see a problem with an all-female Ghostbusters as long as it's done right and as long as you look at it and look at the previous movies and seeing the kind of care and the, and the consistency that they have done with these characters and understood who these guys are. When you try, attempt to bring a new set of characters into a universe, you have to introduce them appropriately. Like the reason why fans love the extreme, extreme, extreme Ghostbusters like cartoon series, because they you had Egon there, you had these other characters that were introduced who wanted to help because the other Ghostbusters left. You know there was no that their business went down the toilet. There was no ghosts. Egon believed that you know. He, he stayed around, he became the caretaker of like the old Ghostbusters HQ in order to make sure if anything does happen, at least one of them is there to basically, you know, deal with this situation. And we went back into the city hating the Ghostbusters, thinking, hey, you know, maybe the last two times was kind of a parlor trick because it hasn't happened again. And why, why are we paying these guys? So it, it left things in limbo but it also left a lot of questions and it allowed these new characters to be introduced under Egon's guidance to allow them to progress now what these girls could have you know what they could have done what Feig could have done is brought Dan Aykroyd on or Bill Murray you know to or even uh, what was the dude who played Winston I've forgotten what his name is but he's very prevalent on TV um, but brought one of those guys on to kind of be the person who hands it over, even if they're just there for the first movie, because it would have made a lot more sense. It would have made a lot more sense to guide these girls and show them what they're doing. And in the trailer, it's like, oh, we, you know, we remember what these guys used to do, so we're going to do the same thing, and but we're going to do it in a kind of an edgier, you know, feminist way. And it, it rubs people up the wrong way. But again, I have no issue with that. You know, I, as far as I'm concerned, I've got the same mentality as you would with X-Men Days of Future Past, where you would go in there with low expectations, but hopefully it might impress me, which X-Men Days of Future Past did. Brian Singer, well, great. I'm not sure about X-Men Apocalypse, though, but we'll see what happens. Um, the Now let's go on to kind of the final, um, the final cast against type that I have an issue with. Apparently, Sony are courting Ice Cube to play the role of J. Jonah Jameson in the new Spider-Man movie. I have an issue with this. And the reason I have an issue with this is, no offence to Ice Cube, Ice Cube plays Ice Cube. He's made a very successful career playing Ice Cube. And myself, I've been trained, I'm a classically trained actor, um, you know, studied under the Stanislavski tutelage. So I understand exactly what it takes to prepare a character and put a character together. And you also have to understand that if you're taking a character as iconic as J. Jonah Jameson, who J.K. Simmons has made an amazing interpretation of, you're going to bring a guy to basically play himself and call him J. Jonah Jameson, it's not going to work. And the reason being is Ice Cube can't play anyone else. Ice Cube is usually the guy, if you've put every Ice Cube movie together, he's literally the same character. If you don't believe me, check it out. Check all the Friday movies, check every other movie that he's done. Even to the point where he did Triple X State of Union, which kind of flopped the rest of the franchise. Um, and he basically killed it because he was just himself being his cocky self. And are we there yet? Are we done yet? <laughs> to name a few ride along. And it's great because he caters to a certain audience who love that, who love his his funny ways of doing things. And the fact he's so sassy but, you know, that's one of the things that rubbed me up the wrong way. And I remember he did an interview talking about the fact that um, he was told, I believe by Lawrence Fishburne, saying, hey, you're in a movie. Why are you taking acting classes? Why do you need to learn how to act? There's something about you that brings it to the table. And it, that's for another video. But that, that annoys me because, you know, I believe a lot that you've taken a lot of actors away from Hollywood now. And it's become a fact of, let's just play a variation of me in this character. Where it's not that. 
you have to transform yourself you have to transform who you are you have to transform your body you have to transform everything about yourself to become this character he can't do that he may surprise me but i i've never for his body of work he has never done that and when you sit there and say this guy's going to be j jonah jameson i just look at it and think it's going to be lines of you crazy motherfucker or you know what kid and it's it won't be the same and yes you know if you want to cast against type fuck if you were going to do a sassy female version of J. Jonah Jameson it would work because of the fact that some semblance of the character would still be there if you were going to do a black J. Jonah Jameson as long as the character was there then you could basically have something you could play off of and you could interpret Ice Cube so it's basically Ice Cube in a Spider-Man movie doing Ice Cube. There was no point. You've got countless black actors out there who could probably play the role a lot better. You've got countless Asian actors, Chinese actors. You've got female actors out there who could play the role better than Ice Cube. And again, I'm not dissing the guy or dissing his body as work. If you like it, great. It's like the whole Medea thing. There is an audience out there who like that. But casting against type just to satisfy a few people or because it's the cool thing is where you end up shooting yourselves in the foot. Whether you're a writer, whether you're a director, whether you just want to change something and make it look kind of cool and new. You don't need to keep throwing all this shit out there and trying to help that it sticks. Oh, Ice Cube, is he's got a renaissance because of the Ride Along movies. Let's cast him. It doesn't work. It's like fucking ice cream and shepherd's pie. You know, these things are great on their own, but you're not going to put the two things together because it's going to taste like shit. Oh, and that's the rant over for that. And I apologise if, you know, the video's a bit long. If you sit there and you get really pissy about it, that's fine. But in the end, this had to be established. It's, you know, character story. Uh, and you've got to make sure that the essence of the character is still there. The subtext of the character is still there. Otherwise, it's not going to work for you. Oh, and, and one last thing. For those people getting pissy about the fact that Danny Brand is white, you know, Iron Fist here's a the whole thing the the whole art the whole thing about him being a spoiled rich white kid kind of works into his backstory so i have no issue with the fact that he's being this character he's he's supposed to go and live with these monks and train so he can be humble it's the same thing with dr strange if you cast dr strange as Il idris elba or another black actor it would be fine because you still have the semblance of the character there but when the backstory is a spoiled, rich, white kid from the suburbs, you kind of have to, like, you know, give it some context there. And you've got enough black characters going on at the moment. You've got a huge load of other characters coming in. And for those who says, oh, why can't he be Asian? Here's the reason why. We're not in the 90s where Asian stereotypes are a good thing, right? He doesn't have to be an Asian stereotype. I think we've broken away from that a little bit. So, you know. But anyway... If you like what you see here and you like this discussion, you want to join this discussion, please leave a comment below. I would love to hear your thoughts on this. I'd love to hear what you think of the whole casting against type thing. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Why do you feel that it's a good thing or why do you feel that it's a bad thing? Because I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Um, the one thing that I will like to say, peeps, don't sit there and go... But I don't like the Ghostbusters thing because they're women. Explain, elaborate a little bit for me. Because I can't sit there and say because they are a gender or because they are black as a, re as a reason behind this. We don't want to go into a whole racist, sexist thing here. Um, I just want to hear why you feel it doesn't work. And if, you know, and I know everyone's got an opinion. I know everyone has, an, has a reason to hate certain characters or love certain characters. But sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. But nowadays we've got to sit there and go maybe it's a bit too much when you're trying to catch every person to cast against type because it's cool but you know anyway i will see you again for another vlog as soon as something comes to mind um i am working on getting my equipment back 
soon. I don't know when as of yet, but watch the space. Um, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it from me, guys. This is Mike again saying you to have a great one and I'll see you soon.